ever wondered how your digital devices work? How do they manage to perform complex tasks while consuming minimal power? The secret lies in a technology called Complementary Metal Oxide Semiconductor, or CMOS for short. It's a key player in the world of integrated circuits, making your devices smarter, more efficient, and incredibly versatile. From microprocessors to memory devices, CMOS is the unseen hero in the digital age. Stay tuned to discover the intriguing world of CMOS technology. The magic behind your digital devices lies in a technology known as Complementary Metal Oxide Semiconductor, or CMOS. CMOS is a type of semiconductor technology used in the fabrication of integrated circuits. These circuits form the backbone of our digital world, powering everything from calculators to computers. But how does it work? At the heart of CMOS technology are two types of transistors, NMOS and PMOS. NMOS transistors are typically used for circuit elements where a low voltage or logic zero is desired. On the other hand, PMOS transistors are used where a high voltage or logic one is needed. But the real magic happens when these two types of transistors are used together in a complementary fashion. This is what gives CMOS its name. By pairing NMOS and PMOS transistors, CMOS circuits can efficiently implement logic gates, the fundamental building blocks of digital electronics. This unique pairing of transistors is what gives CMOS technology its exceptional characteristics. Let's delve into the key characteristics that make CMOS the preferred technology for digital circuits. First up, we have low power consumption. One of the significant advantages of CMOS technology is its low static power consumption. When a CMOS circuit is idle, it essentially consumes no power. Power dissipation occurs primarily during the transition from one state to another, making CMOS technology highly efficient and ideal for battery-operated devices. Next, we have the high noise margin. The use of complementary transistors in CMOS circuits results in a high noise margin. This makes CMOS circuits less susceptible to noise and provides robustness. In layman's terms, this means that CMOS circuits can effectively distinguish between high and low logic states, even in noisy environments, ensuring the integrity of the signal. Third, we come to high packing density. CMOS technology allows for a high packing density of transistors on a chip. This means that more transistors can be packed into a given area, leading to increased levels of integration and functionality. This density is a result of the complementary nature of the transistors in CMOS circuits, which effectively doubles the number of transistors that can be placed in a given area. Lastly, CMOS circuits can operate over a wide range of supply voltages. This flexibility allows CMOS circuits to be used in a variety of applications, from low-power devices like wristwatches and calculators, to high-power applications like microprocessors and memory chips. In addition, CMOS technology offers excellent scalability. With improvements in fabrication techniques, the size of CMOS transistors has been steadily decreasing, allowing for even greater packing density and improved performance. The ability to scale down transistor size has been a significant factor in the continued dominance of CMOS technology in the semiconductor industry. These characteristics have made CMOS technology a cornerstone in the world of electronics. At the heart of CMOS technology lies a variety of logic gates and circuits. These aren't just abstract concepts, but the very building blocks that allow our electronic devices to perform complex functions. Let's delve a little deeper and understand these essentials. The most basic building block of CMO circuits is the inverter. An inverter is a simple arrangement of a PMOS and an NMOS transistor. When a high voltage is applied to the input, the NMOS transistor turns on and the PMOS transistor turns off, resulting in a low voltage at the output. Conversely, when a low voltage is applied to the input, the PMOS transistor turns on and the NMOS transistor turns off, producing a high voltage at the output. In essence, an inverter flips the input signal, turning a high into a low and a low into a high. Now let's look at the more complex logic gates that can be built using these inverters. The AND gate, for instance, gives a high output only when both its inputs are high. On the other hand, an OR gate outputs a high signal if either or both of its inputs are high. The NAND and NOR gates are essentially inverters applied to the outputs of AND and OR gates, respectively. 
A NAND gate gives a low output only when both its inputs are high, while a NOR gate outputs a low signal if either or both of its inputs are high. Lastly, we have the XOR, or exclusive OR gate, which outputs a high signal only when its inputs are different. That is, if one input is high and the other is low, the XOR gate gives a high output, but if both inputs are the same, it outputs a low signal. These logic gates and circuits form the basis of the complex digital functions that our devices perform. From the simplest calculator to the most advanced supercomputer, it's these fundamental elements, working in harmony, that make modern digital technology possible. Despite its many advantages, CMOS technology does have a vulnerability known as latch-up. Latch-up refers to a condition in which a low impedance path is unintentionally created between the power supply rails of an integrated circuit. This condition is caused by parasitic structures within the IC itself and can lead to a significant increase in current flow, potentially damaging or destroying the circuit. The parasitic structures involved in latch-up are typically a pair of transistors, one NPN and one PNP, which form a four-layer PNPN structure. Under normal operating conditions, these parasitic transistors are inactive. However, under certain conditions, such as a rapid increase in voltage or an overvoltage event, these transistors can become active, leading to latch-up. The potential for latch-up is an inherent part of CMOS technology, stemming from the use of both N-type and P-type transistors in the circuit design. However, circuit designers have developed several strategies to mitigate this risk. These include the use of guard rings, which are additional layers of semiconductor material inserted around the transistors to isolate them from each other and prevent the formation of the PNPN structure. Additionally, proper layout techniques can also help minimize the risk of latch-up. As with any technology, understanding and managing its weaknesses is just as important as leveraging its strengths. You might be wondering, where do we use CMOS technology? A good question. And the answer is quite simply, everywhere. From the computer or smartphone you're using right now to the digital watch on your wrist, CMOS technology is a cornerstone of the digital revolution. Let's start with microprocessors and microcontrollers. These are the brains of your computer and many other electronic devices. They interpret and execute instructions, process data, and control other hardware components. CMOS technology is widely used in their fabrication because of its low power consumption and high packing density. Next, we have memory devices. CMOS is employed in the design of Static Random Access Memory, or SRAM. SRAM is a type of semiconductor memory that uses bistable latching circuitry to store each bit. It's fast and reliable, exactly what you need when you're storing and retrieving data. Digital Applications Specific Integrated Circuits, or ASICs, are another domain where CMOS shines. These are custom chips designed for specific applications, and they can range from simple logic gates to complete systems on a chip. The low power consumption and high noise margin of CMOS make it an excellent choice for these applications. Last, but certainly not least, CMOS is used in the implementation of analog and mixed signal circuits. These circuits process both digital and analog signals, and they're crucial in applications like telecommunications and signal processing. Clearly, CMOS technology has a broad range of applications, underpinning much of our digital world. CMOS technology has come a long way since its inception. It evolved from a promising alternative to other semiconductor technologies to becoming the dominant fabrication process for an array of digital and analog circuits. Over the decades, CMOS technology has undergone continuous scaling trends. It's a fascinating process where the physical dimensions of the transistors are reduced, resulting in smaller feature sizes. This scaling down process has led us from submicron technologies, which dealt with transistor dimensions in the range of thousands of a nanometer, to modern nanometer technologies, where we're dealing with transistor sizes that are merely a few tens of nanometers. But why do we scale down? The answer lies in the benefits it provides. As we shrink the size of transistors, we can pack more of them into a given area, increasing the transistor density. This leads to chips with more functionality and increased performance. Moreover, smaller transistors switch faster, which means higher operational speeds for our digital devices. However, as we continue to scale down, we approach the physical limits of CMOS technology. The challenges of quantum effects, power consumption and heat dissipation become more significant. 
Yet the industry relentlessly innovates, finding ways to push these boundaries and continue the evolution of CMOS technology. As we continue to push the boundaries of technology, CMOS remains at the forefront, driving our digital future.